Hi everyone, welcome to uh, Computers and Writing here at New Mexico State University. I am Clint Lanier, I'm your professor for the semester. Um, this is a quick intro video uh, that uh, is going to kind of introduce you to the class, introduce you to me, um, and tell you a little bit about uh, what we're going to be doing this semester. I'm going to be going over the syllabus, uh, also going over your Canvas uh, course, the different modules, the different assignments that you'll have. I try to go through all that that type of information um, just to help you out and give you uh, kind of a running start. I'm also going to kind of dive into what we're doing in this course, what it's for. Uh, remember, this is a professional communication course, so that's kind of kind of be my my um, focus for the semester. Okay. Well, first of all, as I said, my name is Clint Lanier. I'm a professor here at uh, in the Rhetoric and Professional Communication Department in uh, New Mexico State University. My focus is typically on professional communication. I worked for um, for a number of years as a technical writer for IBM and then later for the Army Research Laboratory. And I've been consulting uh, ever, uh, probably since about 2000 uh, in industry. So I have a, a lot of experience in working as a technical writer um, for software companies and hardware companies and, and so forth. So a lot of tech stuff, and that's mostly what I focus on. And that's what most of my classes focus on as well. I teach the document design courses here. I'll teach the technical editing course in the in the spring, which I highly recommend you you take. It'll also be an online course. Um, so a lot of the, the professional communication courses are kind of in my wheelhouse, so to speak, including this one, computers and writing. Okay, so let's get right into it. Uh, let's start with the syllabus and um, talk a little bit about the course. Okay. So course description, um, I guess I'll go ahead and, and read it to you. Uh, well, first of all, this is 479, 579 uh, computers and writing. So this is a cross-listed course with both undergraduate and graduate students. And with the graduate students, there are both master's students and PhD students. Um, I tried to make the readings uh, uh, interesting enough so that the, the graduate students wouldn't nod off and fall asleep, but not too difficult so that the undergraduates uh, were, were lost, okay? Most of the readings focus on, um, focus, well, and, and actually in all my courses you'll notice that they do focus, they do have theory, but a lot of them focus on application of theory. So they'll talk about various theories of whatever it happens to be, but also uh, how do we apply those different theories, okay? So a lot of this course is in application. But uh, just reading off the course description, New technologies, especially multimedia technologies, have become a concern for professional communication in both industry and academia, but are perhaps especially important to professional communicators themselves. These technologies have created new modalities of professional communication. The term writing has shifted to mean text other than the traditionally written word. Professional communicators today must be familiar with new modes of writing and be prepared to utilize them in the workplace as a situation uh, requires, is what it should say. You ever notice you really only catch a typo when you're reading it to somebody else? Anyway, this course will trace the history and rise of multimedia technologies and multimodal writing in professional communication by looking at the work of important scholars. We will then focus on specific ways multimedia might be integrated into professional communication. Some approaches to be discussed may be writing with video and images, virtual workspaces, and the use, again, sorry about the typo, of blogging and microblogging tools. The course will include online discussions, technology tutorials, and multimodal communication creation. A major project in this course will be the creation of a professional communication project combining technology with professional communication principles, right? Uh, our course objectives, by the end of the semester, students should be able to explain the ways in which multimedia is used to communicate complex and complicated information, support users in tasks through multimedia, Utilize forums and other Web 2.0 plus technologies in professional communication contexts. Produce multimedia artifacts through the use of relevant technology tools. Understand how social media tools can be used for professional communication tasks. Topics to be covered include animated GIFs, data visualization, also called infographics, user forums, online comics, internet memes, and instructional videos. So let's back up to a lot of those things, okay? So what is a professional communicator? Pro, uh, professional communicator is anyone who has a career or works in a discipline in which their main task is communicating information, okay? Now, it's not a te technical communication and professional communication are two different things. Technical communicators work very specifically in technology-related fields, 
Um, so I worked in the software industry, for example. Professional communicators can work in really any field where their job is to communicate professionally. Okay. Now, let's say 20, 30 years ago, it was kind of easy to figure out what somebody like that did, uh, what the capacity in which they worked was. They wrote. They either wrote or they spoke or something like that. But you know, their their type of communication was very limited, and it was especially textual based. Well, thanks to the onset of technology and especially the internet and, and networking, we've grown beyond that. And so writing, so to speak, has, has changed a lot and uh, we have to kind of change with it. Professional communicators today have to be uh, not just willing, but be comfortable to use uh, various modes of communication. Now, what do we mean by multimodal communication? A mode is the type of tech, uh, the type of uh, medium. Well, no. <laughs> if I say the type of mode, that would be redundant. The mode is the form in which communication takes. Okay, so one mode of communication is writing. That's textual based communication. But another mode is uh, narrative. If you ever listen to a podcast, which I listen to all the time, that's a mode of communication. So. When we talk about multimodal, it might be using text and audio, uh, but other modes are video, animation, uh, visuals, uh, you know, so uh, just a whole abundance of, of different types of, of communicating. And when we speak of multimodal communication, we mean using all of those at our disposal. So a professional communicator, as you know, as you should know, focuses on what the audience wants and needs, how best to communicate with that audience for whatever purpose you have in mind. Well, uh, audiences might respond better to a video than they would to perhaps textually written instructions. Okay, so you have a video, that's a different mode of communication. You're also gonna have audio in there, so that's two different modes of communication. And if you use, for example, text callouts, so you say step one, you literally write step one on the video and uh, reiterate what the narration is. Well, that's three modes of communication. Uh, beyond that, you also have closed captioning for those who might have a, a hearing um, uh, disability um, or are impairment, I should say. Uh, closed captioning is a fourth mode of, of communication. So multimodal communication, even though you're perhaps making just a how-to video on YouTube, it takes a wealth of different forms or different modes of communication. We have to be able to do that now. As a professional communicator, if you get hired, it's going to be expected that you do more than just write. It's going to be expected that you uh, are able to, to work in all these different modes of communication. Multimedia is a little bit different. Media is uh, the type of medium in which the technology or in which the, the uh, communication is transmitted. So a media could be a video, but within that video, there are multiple modes of communication. I hope that makes sense. And the example I just used is YouTube. The media is a video. The mode there are, is multimodal because you have uh, the video, so moving images. You also have the narration, so you have audio as a mode. You have uh, text callouts to, to uh, reiterate the instructions that you're giving them by narration, so that's a third mode. And, and closed captioning could be a fourth mode. <clears throat> and even within there, you could just put up you know static images and so forth, and you could have an image for an example of something. That could be a different mode of communication. So multimedia is the, uh, the medium that, that transmits the message, but the message itself, the form that it takes, is the mode. Okay, so multimodal. So again, the, the, the workplace has changed. The two readings that we have uh, for the very beginning of this class kind of trace multimodal communication, but also the second reading uh, by uh, Brumberger and Lauer um, argue for a different way of training for professional communicators that in you know, includes this multimodal training. So that's what we're doing in this class. Um, we have a lot of work to do, a lot of things that we're going to do. As we, you can see on the syllabus here, we're going to be talking about animated GIFs, um, infographics, user forums, online comics, internet memes, instructional videos. And you're going to make every single one of those, which I think is, is going to be kind of fun. Our assignments and grade, moving on. Uh, you have an animated GIF assignment. Uh, where you will actually create a couple of, of different animated GIFs. Um, you have a data visualization or infographic uh, assignment that will also be turned in with an analysis memo. So you'll create an analysis memo for, for most of these assignments, okay? 
You'll have a for an example, a forum example, and an and an analysis memo. In this case, you're not going to be creating a forum. Instead, you're going to be going to a user forum and uh, creating an evaluation or an analysis of the form. Actually, two different forums. Uh, meme and analysis memo. I hope you all know what a meme is. If not, you will be steeped in the academia of what a meme is. Um, <clears throat> so you'll create a meme and then you'll write an analysis about that. A web comic and analysis memo. Um, do you ever read web comics? Well, if you do or you don't, you're going to be uh, given an opportunity to make one. So you're going to make a web, your own web comic about some particular professional communication um, purpose and you'll write an analysis about that. Uh, multimodal user assistance document and analysis essay. That is going to be, oh, I'm sorry, I skipped instructional video. Instructional video and analysis memo. So you'll be making it a video, posting it to YouTube that shows a user how to do something. Um, and then a multimodal user assistant document and analysis essay. That's a final project, which I haven't got written yet, uh, but I'll, I'll be putting it up soon. In that case, you're gonna use three or four of these different modes of communication within a single document to help a user or help a reader do something, whatever that something is. You'll also have seven different class discussions through the semester. Those will be based on each of the readings where you'll uh, find an example of whatever the reading is talking about and do an analysis, conduct an analysis on it. And if you're a lucky graduate student, you also have additional readings to do outside of the readings that I assign uh, for each of the modules. So you'll do a reading and you'll uh, create a summary of that reading and tell us all about it. And you'll upload that to a discussion. If you're an undergraduate student, I don't even think you'll see that, that, uh, that assignment, so you don't have to worry about that. Now, all of these, as you can see, all of these are kind of technology-related uh, assignments. You're going to learn the technology within the class itself. Um, I have various technology tools that I want you to use, and I will be assigning tutorials for each of those technology tools or I will um, have you, uh, or I will make the tutorials myself. I haven't gotten all of it written, okay, um, but I have most of them done, all right. Um, if you are on campus, something that I, I want to mention, if you are on campus, you'll be using primarily Adobe Premiere and Adobe Photoshop. If you don't know how to use those, don't worry. Uh, you'll be taught how to use those through tutorials for each of the assignments. Now, if you're on, off campus and you don't have access to those, then uh, there are a couple of alternatives that I've, I've listed out and I've given links to uh, in the introduction module. Those are, uh, there's a, a software called GIMP, G-I-M-P, that you will learn to use. It is an open source alternative to Photoshop. And even if you're on campus and you have access to the campus computers with Photoshop, um, it might not be a bad idea just to download GIMP anyway. It's an incredibly powerful image manipulation software that, again, is open source, but it's it's kept updated, and it, it does absolutely everything that Photoshop does. It doesn't do it as eloquent, elegantly, I should say, um, but it does it very, very well. And if you want to know Photoshop backwards and forwards and you don't have access to Photoshop, GIMP is a great tool to learn with, um, and uh, you can usually transport transpose whatever... It, uh, knowledge you have about GIMP, you can usually uh, bring that, transfer that knowledge over to Photoshop very easily. Um, as far as Adobe Premiere goes, that's kind of the industry standard for video uh, editing software. Uh, instead, if you are off campus and you don't have access to Premiere, then you will use either iMovie if you have a Mac or you'll use Movie Maker if you have a Windows device, okay? Um, but you do need, let me give you one caveat. These technologies do need a computer to be used with. You can't, I wouldn't rely on a mobile device. So this course, though you can uh, take a lot of it and use like a, a, an iPad for a lot of it, um, you're going to need a, a computer, access to a computer uh, for some of the technology and some of the projects, okay? Um, some of the other technologies that we use are all online based. So the web comics, for example, you can use online um, tools for those, and I've given you links to all of those. Same with the animated GIF. I have you use um, Photoshop to make one of them, and I have you use Giphy.com for another one. So, and the same with the uh, the infographic. Okay. So technology is a big part of this um, this class. Uh, if you're not familiar with those, don't worry. Uh, you know, I'm not I'm not grading you on how smart you are on technology. You'll have to use the technology to create the final outcome. Uh, the analysis is actually quite important on a lot of these assignments. So as long as you 
have nailed down everything that the uh, analysis needs to provide you, you definitely will be fine, okay? Uh, fine. Moving on to assignment deadlines and turning assignments in late. The deadlines for all assignments are based on the modules and all assignments within a certain module are all the same. That should say all assignment deadlines within a certain modules are all the same. So for example, the first module, it ends on a certain uh, date and then you move on to the next module. Everything is due by that date. Okay, um, That means that if you don't have it in by that date, it's late. But it doesn't mean that you can't turn things in before. You've got about two weeks per module here. So you'll have two weeks in which to get about four or five readings done. Um, and they're about medium level readings, medium to, to high level readings, okay? This isn't, this isn't trivial stuff, but you'll have about two weeks to get readings done, get a discussion in, and get the assignment done plus the analysis memo, okay? Um, so use your time wisely. And if you're a grad student, then you have the added benefit of reading something outside of, of those readings and providing a summary to it, okay? Um, so use your time wisely and, and definitely um, uh, figure out how to, how to spread it out a little bit, all right? Uh, do, 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 do. So that is not to say you should turn them all in at the same time, as I just mentioned, that would probably be a lot of work. Instead, space them out and get them done within a reasonable time period for yourself, okay? Uh, I do not accept late discussions. It's in bold right here. Um, you've got up until the discussion date to, to um, turn in your discussion, to reply to the discussion prompt. After that, the discussion's closed, and I don't take anything late. You can turn assignments in late, which is basically the project. So you can turn the projects in late, but I dock 20% per day that it's that it's late. The reason I do this is you've got two weeks to do it, all right? You can turn it in any time within these two weeks. You don't have to wait until the, the date that it's actually due. So you've got plenty of time to, to get it done. Now, if you turn it in late, that means that you probably waited until the last minute. Now, if you contact me a week into the module and say, hey, I'm probably going to be late because of these things. Perhaps you're a grad student, you're going to a conference or something like that. That's fine. At least you've let me know and maybe we can work something out. Okay. Um, but uh, otherwise, there's really no excuse to turn things in late. Um, as an online course, you've got deadlines and you've got those get those deadlines done. All right. Um, academic and non-academic misconduct uh, is there and then discrimination, disability, accommodation. Um, I'm going to make sure that any video tutorial that we use has closed captioning so that if uh, you do have um, some type of, of perhaps audio impairment, uh, it will be closed caption and, and you should be fine, as should this, this recording, okay? Uh, now, let's go into the modules themselves. We've got, I think, I think it's seven modules, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Seven modules starting with our introduction. A couple things I want to note. I want you to note the introduction of welcome, which is where you found this. Your analysis memo expectations. You have, I believe, three, three or four different um, analysis memos on uh, things that you've turned in on your projects. The expectations for those memos are right here. See so Adobe Acrobat, excuse me for a moment. Go back to where I was. Uh, so you, the expectations for those memos are right here, including the memo format. So please read that. Next are your discussion expectations. What I want you to put into your discussion prompts, it's all right here. Your rubric will be based on, on these expectations, okay? Uh, technology tools that I, I just mentioned. So you can download Movie Maker if you don't have access to Adobe Premiere. Um, if you don't have access, if you have a Mac, uh, I'm sorry, that was for a Windows-based computer. If you have a Mac, you can download iMovie. Uh, those are both free for either one of those operating systems. Alternatives to Adobe Photoshop, GIMP, as I mentioned, your online GIF generator. Uh, we're going to use Giphy. Here's an online comic maker. I give you a couple of choices when it comes to the actual assignment, but here's probably the best. Now, if you're on campus, um, you can use Adobe Photoshop and Adobe Premiere, and those are both located in our Creative Research Center, which is downstairs in the uh, Clara Bell Williams Hall, otherwise known as the English Building say downstairs, I'm upstairs with my office. Um, but those you can find in room 121 of Clarabel Williams Hall uh, on any of the iMacs there. They'll have Adobe Premiere and Photoshop. If you need help getting started, ask one of the coordinators down in the lab and, and they'll help you out. You can also find this software on any of the computers at Pete's Place on, on the Macs. Uh, they're also on all the Windows computers, 
located on campus. So you shouldn't have a problem finding Adobe Premiere or Photoshop. Um, the uh, toolbars might be a little bit different between the two, but otherwise they're, they're exactly the same. Okay. Um, if you have any questions about technology tools or need any accommodations, please let me know. Uh, you do have a discussion to August 30th based on the two readings that I've, I've asked you to do um, uh, in, uh, in there. Next, animated GIFs. Um, and then you have data visualization, infographics, memes, user forums, online comics, and instructional videos. I'll let you go and peruse those uh, in your own time, okay? Let's look at a couple of things, shall we? Um, and, and see how these multimodal, these different modes of communication really helps in terms of professional communication. First one is animated GIFs. Now, animated GIFs are funny, and I'll, I'll talk about this when it comes to the lecture about animated GIFs. Animated GIFs are funny in that people kind of snicker when I say, well, animated GIFs in a professional communication course. Why would you need that, right? For a lot of reasons. First of all, an animated GIF is more than just um, a uh, something simple, uh, something silly that you text, you know, to your friends. I mean, sure, that that is communication, and it's a different mode of communication, and it signifies a lot. And as a matter of fact, you have a reading just about that. But within professional communication contexts, animated GIFs can be used for a wealth of different things. First of all, they can be uh, used to set a mood or an environment. Let's look at this story, for example. This is a story from the New York Times called Snowfall, the Avalanche at Tunnel Creek. Uh, this won the Peabody Award for um, best article uh, from the New York Times for that year. You can see when you first log on to this, this page, you see this animated GIF of, of blowing snow. And this is what they call a loop. So it just keeps going over and over and over and you, you don't know when it stops or when it starts. And then as you scroll, that animated GIF gets covered up by the story itself. And then you've got a bit of a video in here, so again, more, more um, uh, multimodal forms of communication. You have static pictures, another video. But going back to the top of that animated GIF, talk about setting a mood. And this is why this one particular article uh, was regarded so highly and why it won an award. As soon as you get on, I mean, if you think about what's the feeling that you get when you see this this snowfall, when you see this this gif in front of you, can you hear the wind blowing, you know, kind of whistling and 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 as the snow is going there, and you kind of think about how desolate it looks and how those there's nothing there. And if you think about the title, the Avalanche at Tunnel Creek, the combination of this this gif really gives you a resounding message as to how you should feel when you're looking at this at this uh, particular image. It makes you feel pretty uh, pretty desolate and alone, doesn't it? As somebody in an avalanche might have felt. So uh, this particular animated GIF sets the mood like very few other things could. And you don't need any really any resources to run it. Uh, if this was a video, for example, you could have a video of this, but what would you have to do to recreate this? You'd have to actually, you have to leave it up to the user to press play on that video. Now, can you rely on the user to do that or on the reader to do that? No, of course not. You don't know what they're going to do. But in this case, as soon as they log on to the page, they see this uh, the wind blowing the, the snow, and um, it just gives you kind of an eerie feeling, especially if everything's silent, right? No sound at all? Oh, it's even eerier. So that's one use of an animated GIF. I want to show you another one, though, that within professional communication context makes perfect sense, especially if you're doing technical communication. Let's say you want to show somebody how something works. Well, an animated GIF is a fantastic way to do that. Again, you don't have to rely on the, the reader to press a button, to press play on a video. And a lot of people don't want to do that anyway. But a simple animated GIF that doesn't take a lot of time, that shows you a very, very complex procedure in a very simple way, can be very meaningful for the reader and help them immediately understand it, right? We always say that a picture is worth what? Worth a thousand words. Well, then an animated GIF must be worth even more because here we've got essentially four different pictures, starting with one, that's one picture, two, three, and then four. And each one of these is showing you a different part of the sequence of how an engine worked. And if you didn't know how an internal combustion engine worked, <clears throat> well, now you do. And these obviously are probably going to be extinct in about five years anyway. 
We can scroll down and again we see uh, another animated GIF that shows a different part of it. It's the same thing. This is this was an isolated piston right here. Now you show see what a four cylinder engine looks like. So four different pistons running at, at um, not at the same time, but in sequential motion. And then you have again different modes of communication here. These are just static images, but again you have an animated GIF here that shows uh, how the fuel system plays into. So these are fuel injectors shooting out fuel into the different pistons. So what an amazing use of animated GIF, right? Or uh, animated GIFs to show people how something works. Matter of fact, there's a website called HowStuffWorks.com, how stuff I think is what it's called. And they use animated GIFs all the time. So if you're designing something for the web and you, want it, you had a complex piece of technology and you wanted to make it really easy for the user to figure out how to use that complex technology, well then an animated GIF is probably one of the best ideas that you could you could have, right? Because it 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 breaks up, in this case they've broken up how an internal combustion engine works into multiple you know multiple GIFs. Starting with the simplest, a single piston and going to a whole engine, and then showing you the fuel system, and now it's showing you the air intake, and now it's showing you the cooling system. I think this is air intake. No, oil. This is oil. Now that makes sense. This is air right here. So all these different pieces of a very complex machine are split out into very simple animated GIFs that, that once put together show you how the entire package is assembled into one machine, okay, one, one large system. So um, animated GIFs can be invaluable to you as a professional communicator, to use a technical communicator. Now for your first animated GIF assignment, as you'll see, it's going to be very simple. But the very last assignment, it's going to require that you really think about a complex system and how you can design your own animated GIFs to make that complex, complex system seem very simple to uh, a user of whatever system that happens to be, okay? Now let's shift over to, to videos. Um, Forgive me for for whatever's on here. I can't I can't help but see what whatever YouTube puts on there. But let's do a how to search. How to uh, change your oil. Let's just do it that way. And we have a billion, not maybe not a billion. It doesn't show you how many there are, but you've got a multitude of of videos as you can see. I just keep going on and on and on and on forever. But you know, this is an advantage that we have. It's really changed, as I've, I've harped on in, in other classes before, it's really changed how technical communication happens. Um, if I wanted to change the oil, if I didn't know how to change the oil in a car, I don't know, 25 years ago, my choices were to go read a manual on how to do it, have somebody show me how to do it, or pay to have somebody do it. But now, um, I can simply watch a video. It's a demonstration, uh, and they'll walk me exactly through how to change it. Now here's here's where it gets really interesting. Not only is there are these all these general how to change your oil, but how to change your oil in something very specific. So I have a Volkswagen. <laughs> I have a Volkswagen van. I can't remember what it's called. Vol. It's essentially town and country. So let's go with the Chrysler town and country. How to change your oil in a Chrysler town and country. And I can get very specific. I can even go years. How to change your oil, let's say 2012, Chrysler Town and Country. 2011, 2014, very first thing comes up, right? So instructional videos have, have really um, uh, have shifted the way people look for information as far as how to do something. One of the first places they go is, is to YouTube to to find a video that helps them do whatever it is that they need to get done. Um, so it's a very important tool to have in our toolbox as professional communicators. Um, and uh, the, the, per, the new writer in the multimodal writing, writing workplace kind of has to have this tool. So you're going to learn how to use Adobe Premiere. It's the uh, industry standard for making videos. Um, again, if you're not on campus, then you'll use iMovie or, or Movie Maker, which are both very, very powerful software um, programs themselves, so you're not being um, slided at all. 
uh, by learning either of those. And if, again, if you learn one, you can typically learn the others with relative ease. So let's say you move, you, you have to learn iMovie because you're not on campus. Well, if you ever apply for a job and they say, well, we use Adobe Premiere, you can probably say, I'm pretty good on iMaker and I can, I can make the shift very easily, okay? But again, uh, YouTube videos, different mode of, of um, communication, different way of doing things, right? And another one I wanted to talk about is online comics. I'm not gonna get to them all, so I'm not gonna go through all of them, but a lot of people wonder about online comics. Why would you use that? Well, again, we have, a, we have this fantastic uh, tool at our disposal, the internet, uh, high-speed internet, um, with all these different technologies, video, audio at our, at our disposal, well, why not use them? Um, especially the, the, uh, the, the image-based. Well, comics are a genre that a lot of people might be familiar with. When Google Chrome first premiered, now we're talking maybe five or six years ago, when Google Chrome first premiered, they didn't put out an instruction booklet, like a traditional instruction booklet. Instead, what they put out was essentially a comic book. That showed you all the different features about uh, Google Chrome, um, how it's used, what you can do with it, and people really, really enjoyed it. Um, it walks you through all these very, very technical features about Google Chrome. At the time, a lot of Google, Google uh, excuse me, at the time, a lot of the features of Google Chrome were very revolutionary because the other browsers at the time, Internet Explorer, it it's lousy today. It was <laughs> lousier back then. Um, we had Safari, it was okay, uh, Mozilla was okay at the time, and Google Chrome had features that nobody had ever really seen before. So Google went through and one by one went through all of these different features uh, in, a, in a method or in a genre that people enjoyed, found familiar, was, was not uh, intimidating at all. Um, as you can see, they're very, um, they're, they are not intimidating uh, comics. And um, and it really just helped you learn, right? It used a combination of visuals with some technical information with somebody talking to you to walk you through um, how you can use this, this new browser and all of its new wonderful features, all right? So pretty revolutionary at the time. And comics are still a fantastic way to, uh, to communicate certain messages. And you're gonna have readings about um, different projects that have been carried out with, with comics for different, uh, uh, different um, problems, I guess, how to solve different problems. Health is a big one. Comics are used in health quite a bit uh, because it's, again, it's not an intimidating form of communication. However, the reader is learning very complicated or complex information through reading a comic book or some type of comic. So you're going to design an online comic yourself to help uh, users or readers navigate a particular problem uh, and to, to help um, Communicate a very particular mess, a uh, very particular message for a very specific purpose. Okay, so those are some of the things that we'll be doing this semester, um, and uh, some of the reasons that we're going to be doing it. I've walked you through the syllabus. I've shown you a little, a few of the different things that we'll be looking at. Uh, again, my name is Clint Lanier. My office hours are. Let's go back to the syllabus here. They are Monday and Wednesday, eleven thirty to one, or by appointment. Um, by appointment especially would be helpful. We have our, our department meetings at 1230 every, not every Wednesday, it seems like it sometimes, but uh, once a month on Wednesdays. This month we have two meetings, so this coming Wednesday and then the following Wednesday. Um, but um, for the most part, I will be here uh, during that time uh, if, you, if you need me. Uh, otherwise, feel free and send me an email, make an appointment. We can also do a virtual appointment. Uh, we can speak through chat or or we can call if you're off campus or something like that, okay? Um, I'm here in Clarabelle Williams Hall, room 207. Um, if I'm not here, if you don't find me here, I'll be downstairs in the uh, Creative Research Center, room uh, 121 downstairs. I'm the director of that. Um, so uh, if, you, if you need any help, please let me know, okay? Until then, have a wonderful semester. Let me know if you have any questions. I hope you have fun in this class. Uh, I, I tried to make it challenging where you're going to learn a lot. But don't let it be intimidating to you, uh, especially the technology aspects. Uh, I expect you to start from, from nowhere. If you already know the technology that I'm talking about, brilliant. Then you're, you've got a head start, okay? Uh, take care, everyone, uh, and good luck this semester.